So the my my photography is generally all about violence in yeah. one way or another. Um, the particular project that you guys were looking at, I think, is Killing Season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Killing Season, uh, I really started to be interested in um, violence in Chicago because I, I mean, you read the, they, we have, I don't know if you guys have the red eye out here, but like the yeah. red eye, yeah. you, know, you yeah. get it free like when you get on the subway. Yeah. Morning. And once a week they do this like homicide spreadsheet and it's okay. like for the week there's, you know, six homicides. And I always looked at it and I was like, Oh, well, that's somewhere else. Like, everything was very far away from where I lived, but it was mm -hmm. still within the city. Mm -hmm. um, so it was. I always felt like, oh, well, you know, this is, doesn't apply to me. You know, it's so far away. And then, um, probably, it was 2010, it was like April, there was a day where um, some, it was a guy that two blocks from my house shot two, his two sons and shot himself um, in their backyard, and then, like, a bunch of other things happened. A guy walked into Old Navy downtown and shot himself, his girlfriend and himself, and then there was a shootout on Dan Ryan, and then the CEO of the Metro also committed suicide, all in one day. And everybody was like, oh, well, it's not even summer yet. And I was like, what does that mean, that it's not even summer yet? Like, what, like I don't understand the concept of you saying that it's not summer, this is just the beginning. You know? yeah. And it was such a bad day. Um, so I started, I always go for walks around my neighborhood. So I would go walk around and look for this place because they give you block numbers, right? They never actually give you the exact address. Yeah. So I always had this feeling that I would be able to tell if I walked by, I'd just like have, I'd know where this place was. And um, obviously you can't know because there's no like visible evidence yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, so just th this fascination with, trying to see the places where people were killed and how they looked just like everywhere else um, was something that really kind of sparked my interest in going to all of the sites where people were killed and photographing them. Um, and also, like, amassing, you know, I looked into the statistics and there was, I think, 500 and something homicides for the whole year in Chicago the year before. Mm -hmm. um, we were coming up on a new decade, you know, and we yeah. were also coming up on... Um, a summer where there was big talk about the gun ban in the city mm -hmm. limits of Chicago, and we also had a, you know um, a new police superintendent coming in, so it was like all this stuff happening, and I was like, well, I want to kind of pay attention to this for like one summer and see what this all means. Mm -hmm. um, so I just started compiling information and going out and photographing these sites. Very cool. And was there anything you noticed about the age distribution? Absolutely. Yeah, there were. Uh, there's a place on my blog that if you guys can find to look for, I think it's under statistics, like there's all the tags on the side. Okay. Um, and it has all of, like literally everything statted out to like what neighborhood, how old, everything like that. But generally speaking, the average age was in, in your 20s. Um, wow. Late teens to 20s, um, mid 20s. And it was, you know, significantly larger population in that age than any other age. And like the younger kids mostly were kids that were kind of caught in the crossfire, you know, there were a few kids that were, yeah. you know, 10, 11. Josh phrased it perfectly, what could we take? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the issue is, is a huge issue that it doesn't really have any immediate answers. I know everyone always says, like, oh, if you just do this, it'll be fine. And yeah. I mean, one of the things that I've discovered um, that I think is somewhat surprising is that I really just think that a lot of times, like, if it's gang violence and if it's um, you know, kids that are younger, teen, like teenagers, I mean, even up, I guess, everybody, but um, when you don't have a care for human life, like, when there isn't that sort of connection where you give a crap that you killed somebody, or they, if they kill you, when you, like, the expectation is that you're going to die, there's something wrong with yeah. that, um, and I think a lot of that comes from not having people that care about you, um, and so, what I think that people can do is, you know, I, I really honestly think that like that like Big Brothers Big Sisters program is enormously helpful because what, to just to pay attention to one kid that doesn't get attention from his parents or her parents and um, you know just to make them know that someone gives a crap about them at all mm -hmm. um, can be hugely influential on their lives. You know. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times the, the schools that they go to, they don't get that attention. You know, they have the one school I'm teaching at has 35 kids in their class. You know, wow. In 
seventh grade, and seventh graders are kind of crazy anyway, you know? Yeah. So to try to like teach 35 kids something or pay attention to 35 kids is impossible. Yeah. But to have like, you know, a little one-on-one -on -one time with, with the kid, and I don't think it takes a lot. I think it just takes a little, you know, a little bit of attention, um, which is really, I mean, that's not, I don't think that's easy for everyone to do, you know? It's like, I'm relying on something that's not my experience to, you know, like, have an experience, sort of. And photography does just that, right? Like, I, I've never been to the Congo, but I can see pictures of the Congo, and I can yeah. see what it's like. You know, that's always been photography's like, function from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, well, have you ever read this thick neck film? I did. I just read it pretty recently. Oh, awesome. Oh, really? And so do you feel like you can relate to it any better now because of the work that you've done with this? I read it because of the work I did, right. for sure. I, I think it... I don't know if it changed any, anything that I thought. I think it kind of just reinforced things that I had already learned. But I also read it after doing this mm -hmm. project, so I think it would have been different had I not already gone out to these places and sort of seen that in action. Right. Yeah. And, and going off of that, do you have like any further reading like that you would recommend to us like about urban violence or any other artists or any other like sources? Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody for you guys to look at, for sure, uh, Carlos Javier Ortiz. But he did a project called um, Too Young to Die, which is an awesome photography project on violence. Have you seen The Interrupters? Yeah, The Interrupters is amazing. Yeah. I've actually met a bunch of those guys now. Really? So I had talked to Ceasefire. Do you guys know Ceasefire? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to Ceasefire while I was doing my project, trying to get them to sort of help in different ways, and they were actually filming The Interrupters, and were like, sorry, we can't help you right now. <laughs> in the middle of this big thing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I saw it and I was like, oh, that's what they were doing. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's awesome. And also, as an artist, how do you think your work is affecting you know, the race, the stop violence in Chicago? It's kind of interesting. It's an interesting question, too, because I, I did not start photographing with the intention of um, with being an advocate for like anything. You know? yeah. it's just like, I just was interested, and I wanted to know what was happening, and it was for me. Um, and then I made this, and it was like, I have this thing now that I have to be responsible for making, you know, and I can't just say, well, I just did that, you know, and that's, it doesn't mean anything, you know. Um, so now with all the, I, I've gotten so much response from people from all over the place that now I feel that it's my responsibility to keep up with um, what's going on, you know, and know, you know, the answers to questions about, like, the whole topic of violence in Chicago. And, what people are doing, what people aren't doing, what exists out there. Um, and I think that the piece itself is, has done a lot, but I don't think it can, I don't think the piece can stop violence in any way, mm -hmm. but I think that the piece can make people more aware of what's going on.